Hey, what's going on, Guardians? TBL here, and this is it. This is it. We've reached it. We've got officially a little over one day until the Curse of Osiris, the first DLC pack for Destiny 2, officially launches. And it kind of doesn't feel like it, right? Like, it, I, it can't just be me. I like, I, I'm not the only one out there who feels like uh, we're not in front of a major content release for a Destiny game, right? Because it, it really doesn't feel like it. I mean, I don't know, right? Things are certainly seeming a little bit lukewarm towards the launch of Curse of Osiris. But I guess I am excited for some new content to hit Destiny 2. It's sorely in need of a lot of things right now. And this will at least uh, address a few of those things. But anyways, we're going to talk a little bit in this video about some of the things that are going to be coming tomorrow. How we're going to be handling that coverage. There's certainly going to be a lot of work to do. So let's just go ahead and dive on into it. So Curse of Osiris is going to be launching tomorrow, uh, December 5th, but at a kind of a weird time. They're changing up the reset time, if you'll remember. It's no longer going to be 2 a.m. Pacific, 5 a.m. Eastern Time. But from this coming Tuesday forward, they're going to be moving reset time to about 5 p.m. GMT or 9 a.m. Pacific time, 12 p.m. Eastern time. So it's going to be in the middle of the day for me, which is a little bit weird, but it's something I can work with. It means I can probably get back to making those reset guide videos for you guys here on the channel and, uh, and stuff like that since, you know, it won't be at 5 o'clock in the morning and I'll have to get up and be super crazy trying to get all that stuff out at a relevant time. But the Curse of Osiris is also going to be launching at this time, so it's not going to be available super early tomorrow. It's going to be available at, at, at like, if you're on the East Coast in the middle of the day, which is, it, it, it's not too weird. That's when Destiny 1 used to launch their events at, like, 1, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And this is going to be going live at 12, so when that happens, we're going to be all over it. We're probably going to be live streaming our first experience, going through the campaign, trying to get as many new things as possible. So you guys will be able to tune in right here on YouTube to stick around for that. We will be live streaming it and trying to cover as many things as we can get through. And first things first, I'm probably going to be completing this on PS4 first. Um, I do have the season pass, you know, for Destiny 2, both on PC and PS4. But I'm probably going to complete Curse of Osiris on PS4 first, simply because I uh, it's easier for me to stream and record when I'm doing a console game than it is for me to render and play a game like Destiny 2, stream it on the same computer, and record it on the same computer. I don't have a second PC set up for streaming and recording yet, so uh, gonna do all that on PS4 first, which is okay because I have a lot more people added on PS4. So if we get into some big type content, we'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to invite more people in. But for the first day, as you can guess, it's going to be all about finishing the campaign. The campaign itself for Curse of Osiris is reportedly about two, maybe three hours long. So definitely more along the lines of like the House of Wolves and Dark Below style uh, DLC packs, which is about what I would expect from something the size of Curse of Osiris. So it shouldn't take too, too long to complete. You should be in the in-game grind for those, uh, those 11 lighthouse weapons before you know it. And, uh, you know, hopefully the Infinite Forest can keep you busy once you've uh, solved the Curse of Osiris' story problem, whatever that's going to wind up being. And, you know, I am actually excited for that. I'm excited to see what the Infinite Forest is going to be offering, the different adventures and whatnot you'll be able to have in there. We've gotten to see a little bit of it between Bungie's live streams and, of course, some of the video trailers they put out. Like a few days ago, they put out that weapon trailer that shows off some of the new weapons and armor that are going to be in the Curse of Osiris. And I gotta say, some of them look cool. We've got this awesome new uh, Titan. It looks like an exotic helmet with the three horns and whatnot. We get to see a great look at that new exotic grenade launcher, the one that detonates and like sends out the little insectoid seeking tracker bombs. And that weapon in particular looks really interesting to me, because right now, of course, you know, grenade launchers aren't that great. We've got the Prospector, which is pretty good. Fighting Lion, which, <clears throat> we don't really talk too much about the Fighting Lion, but really the only kind of decent legendary grenade launcher in the game is, is probably play of the game and it's specifically good because of its proximity detonations and this exotic grenade launcher kind of has that same effect you know it detonates and then it sends out these little tracking bombs and depending on how much damage those little tracking bugs do this thing could be a real heavy hitter can't wait to see more about it and we actually get a really great look at it in the banner for uh, for last week's This Week at Bungie for November 30th, 2017. 
The Titan in the front is wielding that exotic grenade launcher, as well as a bunch of new armor in there. It looks super cool. We're getting a brand new trace rifle, which I'm so psyched about. I'm so psyched that they're going to be making trace rifles a thing. It seems like Cold Heart was definitely a success, and we'll be seeing more of those in the future. And we get to see a rather curious new hand cannon wielded by a hunter. If you look at the front barrel of that thing, it kind of looks a little bit like Red Death. And when I say a little bit, I mean they basically took the, the barrel and the end of Red Death and, and just put it onto a hand cannon. Not sure what that means lore-wise or ability-wise for this thing. It'd be super awesome if it has the old Red Death uh, Devour Instant Health Regen on Kill abilities. Man, that would really turn things upside its head in, uh, in the Crucible. But we'll have to see. No doubt the three of those weapons are probably going to be exotics, uh, except maybe the Trace Rifle. Hopefully that might be a legendary weapon if, uh, if they're going to be expanding on that weapon class, although it's probably going to be an exotic. So we're probably going to have some world quests or something to do to get those when the Curse of Osiris finally launches. Very interested. That's that's one of the things you know I'm always excited for, even when it's a lukewarm, uh, even when I feel a little more lukewarm towards a DLC like I am with Curse of Osiris. I'm excited to see what new exotic weapons and armors are coming, and hopefully they're going to be worth the wait. Because right now we are in the longest day of Destiny. The day before a DLC release is always the most difficult one. It's the one where everybody's usually biting their nails, but the atmosphere is a little bit different this time around. A lot of people aren't really that excited for Curse of Osiris, and for good reason. It doesn't look like it's going to be solving a lot of the big perennial issues of Destiny 2, and that's certainly something that's even true for myself. Talked a bit about this on the Planet Destiny podcast last night, but this is the first time, at least for me, in the history of this series, the, the four or five years we've been playing Destiny, that it's been right before a DLC pack, a bit of content release, and I'm not excited in the slightest. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm not nearly as hyped as I usually am before a content release. And, you know, that makes me a little bit sad because I do love Destiny. I enjoy this game. I really want this game to succeed. But, you know, with this, the, the lackluster kind of offering we've had with the, the overall casualization of the game, it just really hasn't gripped me as well as Destiny 1 did. And I went back and played a little bit of Destiny 1 uh, the other day, played some PvP, and holy crap, first off, ugh, 30 FPS really, really hurts. It's so jarring to go from 60 FPS and above on PC back to 30 FPS and below on Destiny 1 on console. But man, was it fun. Crucible was just an absolute torrent of powers and crazy weapons and a weird meta. Not everybody was using sidearms. There was icebreakers in there. There were matadors in there. There was hawk moons, uh, thorns, last words, vex, mythoclass. It was just such a smorgasbord of fun, even in its, even in Destiny 1's super nerfed PvP state right now. It feels better to me, or rather more fun to me than Destiny 2. And that can really go for the entire game. This is really the first time, like I said. I, it's been before a content release, and I haven't really been that excited, and I really hope. I'm gonna play Curse of Osiris. I already bought it. Gotta play it. But in this, I know it's not going to solve all of Destiny 2's problems. There's no way it could. There's some systemic changes that really need to go into effect. That's probably not gonna happen until the first expansion. But in the Curse of Osiris, I really hope that Bungie has taken a few tangible steps forward to address some of the things that the community has uh, has really brought to the forefront. And you know, with this last blog, or blog post, the state of Destiny 2 and all that, it really seems like they're listening and they're trying to move towards that. So I, I, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic, but pretty lukewarm on the excitement towards, uh, towards Curse of Osiris, outside of just seeing stuff like the Infinite Forest and hopefully some brand new exotics. But here we go. We're almost there and hopefully Bungie can knock it out of the park. Because I want this game and this franchise to succeed. I really do, and I really think it has what it needs to. There just need to be a couple of changes first. But anyways, it's going to be it for this one, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. We will be going live tomorrow with the Curse of Osiris. Make sure you're tuned in here at around 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We'll be live leading right up into Curse of Osiris. So make sure you're there. Should hopefully be a lot of fun. But I'm out for now. Be sure to let me know what you Guardians think. Are you excited for Curse of Osiris? Or are you better off playing something else right now? You know, that Monster Hunter World demo is coming out in just a few days. That is going to end everything. Believe me. But all right. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed, feel free to drop a like and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest videos and live streams from us. But that's it for me. As always, I am the Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty.